so the foundations were laid for the ecosystems that now flourish on Earth and on which we ourselves depend. It has to be said, however, that sometimes some of us regard a few of these pioneers more as our enemies than our friends. Many of the mollusks in the sea develop shells to protect themselves from predators. But on land, those shells serve just as well to keep the occupant nice and moist. So without any major change to their anatomy, mollusks were able to creep up out of the water and graze in the forests of algae and mosses that were then spreading over the land. And given the right conditions, they still do. With rain and the coming of night, a secret army comes out of hiding. These are the conditions they like best. Dark, and best of all, wet. Gliding along a carpet of slime works just as well on land as it does underwater. And a rasping tongue scrapes algae off rocks wherever they are. In times of drought, snails may be unable to move around for months on end. So when conditions are right, they eagerly set off to find food. Their upper pair of tentacles carry those eyes with which they look around. The lower ones smell what's beneath. They breathe by means of a small pouch on the right-hand side of their body, just within the shell, which, because it's permanently moist, is able to absorb oxygen. This is what they're seeking, a succulent green leaf. No time to be lost. Dawn will bring a change in conditions. So they have to return to their shelters and clamp down their shells once more so that they retain their moisture. 